Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are making this card. Um, every month I participate in swaps where um, people, demonstrators and non-demonstrators alike, um, we get together and we have different themes. And this um, theme uh, swap here that I'm participating in, it was called Your Favorite Flower. And I thought that with the new Celebrate Sunflowers uh, bundle and stamp set, I would make a card using uh, this stamp set because I do love a good sunflower. And I thought that I could get a lot of good play out of it. So the card I came up with was this one. Um, this card here uses, you can tell here as I move it around, um, that is gold embossing right there. Um, and then we actually use sponge daubers to sponge on the color. But in order to get the color to show up, I actually use the Whisper White Craft ink refill. And I actually paint it on first to serve as a background so that that way the color will show through brighter. Because the crumb cake itself uh, here isn't uh, too dark, but it's just dark enough where those yellows wouldn't really come through as well. So uh, let me show you how to make this card. So first things first, uh, you need your bases and your um, pieces here. So the first thing, let me move this off to the side. Uh, your card base will just be a regular white card base five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter and then on your score line I highly recommend a bone folder to make sure that crease is really nice so there we go we've got a nice crease and then um, the piece you need in crumb cake is a quarter inch off of all of the sides so this would be four um, inches by five and one quarter and so in order to uh, do the next step, w the first thing you would wanna do is actually heat emboss. So let's go ahead and do that. The beauty of heat embossing is that you actually get to have your, um, uh, your ink is not going to stay on the actual gold embossing. It's going to be able to be rubbed off so that it's going to be able to shine through past that point. So let's go ahead and uh, ink up our stamp. So it's already right here. Uh, for this one, I decided not to add the flowers. I thought that that would be very difficult to heat, or not the flowers, I'm sorry, the leaves. I thought that it would be very difficult to heat emboss and add them in without the ink actually like um, burning or the, the embossing burning. So I did not do that. So we'll just ink it up. You will need to ink it up every time you stamp it though, because if it hangs off the side and you re-ink it, it will not um, translate that ink very well. So we're just gonna stamp it down. I'm using Versamark ink. Versamark ink is a clear sticky ink that allows for you to actually get a, um, a powder to stick to it because it dries pretty slowly. And so because of that, you can actually get an assortment of um, kind of techniques done, which is a lot of fun to play with. So I am just stamping three. You could have done two. Uh, you could have stamped the smaller flower picture, uh, the smaller flower stamp if you had really wanted to. Uh, there were a lot of options there. So I'll put that away so I don't accidentally get my ink on it. I'll take my gold embossing powder and then you just sprinkle it on here. Um, you may notice that I am using a piece, oh look, oh, I need to grab that little piece of paper there. Looks like that got caught in there while I was doing other things. So I am just covering it up. I am using a piece of white, con um, just computer paper because this white computer paper will make it where it'll be clean up it will be very, very easy. So I'm making sure it looks like it's a little bit light here. So I'm just gonna scoop some up, re-adhere, and that looks a lot better. So I'll just check all my sides. Looks set to me. So now this is ready to be heat embossed. So it is ready for me to take my, um, my heat tool in order to uh, set the color. So um, rather than turning it on at the moment though, with how loud it is, I'm actually going to, by the, oh, let's clean up after myself. 
Ha, and you can tell, see, I because I stamped off the card, the gold embossing actually got caught on there. Let's wipe, wipe, wipe. Okay, so now uh, if I put that away, that way it won't be in our way. So um, you just use your heat tool here on the second setting here. Um, one is really good for drying things. Two is better for heat setting things. And so uh, you just turn it on. The catch here is that you do want to make sure that you don't heat emboss it too long in one area because otherwise it will burn. When you finish, it should look like this where it'll be shiny all over. Uh, there may be a few spots that won't be as shiny if either the powder didn't stick well or if you overheated it. And that's, you know, that's not the end of the world if that happens, especially because in our case, we're going to be coloring on top of it. So what you're doing next, I used, rather than, you know, getting out an actual palette for ink, I actually just used one of my blocks, one of my uh, acrylic blocks. What I do and I is I actually just take a drop of this and I just kind of smear it on here. This is a craft ink and this allows us um, to have some really nice white to cover the flowers with. So you just add a little water from your water painter. Notice you it'll actually come out really, really thick originally, and you wanna add more water to get it to thin out, okay? So I'm just thinning it out, and essentially I'm just painting on the surface here. So um, you probably want it to be a little bit whiter on the leaves so the color comes through, but because you're making your centers of the flowers uh, the uh, um, early espresso is the color I chose for that, which is a pretty dark brown. You really don't want it to be too white of a background first. So when I actually made my first card, the one that I demonstrated, you can kind of tell that it, it it is darker, but it's a little, it looks a little, I don't know, like it's nice, but it, oh, excuse me, it looks maybe a little off. So for the next one, I actually didn't do it as much. So I'll show you that here in a second. So you're just essentially coloring it in. Um, and don't be bothered by the fact that sometimes it seems like it might pool more than in, an, in one place than another, because that's going to be fine once it actually um, starts drying. And then you can just take uh, either a cloth uh, or I honestly, I just used a tissue as well, um, because some tissues will leave a little residue. But because I was sponging on the color, I thought that it wouldn't really make as much of a difference there. So there's that flower. You'll do the same over here all the way until you are done. And so these won't actually take too, too long to dry. You uh, will need more time to let them dry if you used a lot of water, but you really don't want to use too much anyway, because what's going to happen is your paper is going to start peeling up and that will kind of take away from the, um, the look of this card. So you just do it on your petals if you want. You can, like I said, especially if you're going to use a lighter brown, like if you wanted to keep it crumb cake, you could have left it alone completely. Like that could have been fine. Or you could have colored it in white and then sponged on crumb cake ink if you wanted it to have a similar look. All of those things would be um, definitely ways that you can make it yourself, like make it your own. So there we go. So when you are done, you do need to, like I said, let it dry. So I'm going to set this off to the side, and again, through the magic of television. When it is all dry, it'll look something like this. And to get to your next step, uh, you will need some sponge daubers. For this card, I chose three colors. I chose Early Espresso, pumpkin pie and crushed curry. So in order to do that, you can go in any direction. It really, I actually started with the crushed curry ink first because I went in, like I started from the outside and worked my way into the middle. The middle is going to be my darkest color. So I started with my lightest because that would be the one that would be perfectly fine if we had um, kind of colors going over it, right? If it's dark, but if I'm using a light color and it gets covered 
because I'm, I'm not using uh, my, my darker colors go darker all around then that takes away a little bit from our um, from our creation here so I'll show you how to do one of these so I just went around for my whole flower I did not um, all of the petals I did not only do the tips in this crushed curry color I did make sure to get all of them so Right, and we've got this. And you can add as much or as little color as you want, just like you could have added as much or as little yellow, or um, uh, white uh, background as you wanted. So there's my crushed curry. And obviously if I was doing all of it, I would have done all of my crushed curry first and then moved on to my pumpkin pie. So there's that, let's do the pumpkin pie. And let's actually add a little dab here so that that way the white won't be quite as stark. And then my early espresso. And then I'm just kind of tap, tap, tapping. I'm not like brushing it. I am tapping the ink. There's that. And then I just took a tissue, just a little ink tissue essentially, and then once I give it a second, I don't know if you can tell, you might be able to tell a little bit, some of the ink is actually sitting on top of that um, gold, so I'm just taking it and I'm just rubbing it. Not too hard, because you don't want to damage your color, but just enough so that that way that shine comes back through, so I hope you see that. So then you'll do that for all of your flowers and it'll look something like this. So now this card is almost ready to be adhered. I did decide to add a little bit of twine to my card to wrap it around here, right? So I did add a little twine and a little bow and I added about 22 inches or so. Um, I, it's always fine to cut a little bit extra so that that way you, um, it's easier to cut off extra than it is to try to um, extend something that will not extend. So I just hold it here and then wrap, wrap, and wrap, and then I go ahead and adhere it. So in this case, I actually tied the two together. So I took one of these and I put it underneath the other one so that I could tie them together. Let's lower it a little bit. And so, I did tie a knot first as well because I thought that that would make for um, an easier time tying the bow is if I tied the knot first, although this one's giving me a trouble. There we go. It'll be a little bit better once I put it on the card, I think. So let's go ahead, put that down. And then I tighten the little knot a little bit more. And notice too, that by holding the center piece, then that makes it where um, the back knot's going to be, or the knot will stay in place. Okay, so it looks like the, there you go. So now, in order to adhere it to the card, uh, because of this trim being in the way, I'm gonna just use my seal. And you just, ooh, I just go right over the actual um, piece of twine. I don't turn, um, I don't try to take it off. So that is ready to be adhered to my card base. So, Oh wait, whoopsie, look at that. I was too eager, I forgot to stamp on my sentiment. Let me show you how to do that. I was so eager to be done, but that's okay. So uh, for my sentiment, I thought I would use this one, the Know That You Are Loved, but I wanted to use just the You Are Loved because originally I was like, oh, I could put it here, but then the, the Know That wouldn't fit. So I chose, I used my um, Early Espresso Stamp and Write marker and I actually just took it, oh, whoops, let's use the right side. So there are two sides, there's the bullet tip and the brush tip. So I actually just used the brush tip and I just 
and brush it on to just the part that wants the ink, right? So I want it on just the you are loved, not all over, just on the you are loved. And I find a little hair here. There we go. So then you just make sure it's only on the part you want. And I did choose early espresso because our um, our backing here is in crumb cake. So if I would picked a lighter ink, it probably wouldn't have looked as good. And there we go. So um, we've got our sentiment here stamped. It'll dry in a second. I've got my twine here. So now only thing to add left is our gilded gems. I thought that that would tie in the gold really well. And so in order to do that, I actually used uh, my take your pick tool. Uh, the take your pick tool has on one end the um, piercing tip as well as the spatula tip. So if you need it to help pick up these gems, you totally can. Just go underneath it and put it where you'd like. So on mine, I started the large, medium, and small, and I'm going to keep that, but I'll just put it in a different spot since it looks like I put my twine a little bit lower. There we go. And there we go. So that is my card that I've made for my swap. So I've got many more to do, but as you can tell from my pre-made sections here that that'll be easy to do. Um, so uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to get any of the materials that I use to make these cards, feel free to look in the descriptions below. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more inspiration using this stamp set and others. I actually participated in a different swap that I'm going to be making for and sharing that video. Uh, I don't know if that'll be next, but definitely soon. Um, so um, get in touch with me if you need any materials or if you'd like to get your hands on a catalog to see what else we have as offerings for this year's annual catalog. And um, I look forward to creating again. Bye!